In this video, we'll demonstrate the steps required to configure SnapClone. Now, SnapClone is the latest feature available via the Enterprise Manager Database as a Service portal. SnapClone enables rapid cloning of databases using the storage copy and write technology. This technology will enable your self-service users to log into the portal and request multiple copies of your production databases within a matter of minutes and without consuming any significant storage. In the first iteration of this feature, uh, we have added support for NAS storage, which is the, the Oracle Sun ZFS storage appliance and the NetApp storage. Uh, and in subsequent releases, uh, more storage vendors and SAN storage will be certified. Now where Enterprise Manager really shines is the integrated lifecycle management. So the copy and write technology really offers agile provisioning, but independent of the uh, size of the uh, database, the time to provision is, is almost constant. And the storage savings are significant. So you could clone a one terabyte databases and only consume a few kilobytes of space uh, for a read-only database. Now, what Enterprise Manager does is it bridges the, the coordination that is required between the storage administrator and the DBAs, which has been a constant challenge in any data center. So Enterprise Manager offers role-based access so your storage administrators can log in and access uh, uh, parts of the product that only they have visibility into. Uh, and once they, have done, uh, once they are done with their storage setup, they can hand off control to the DBAs and then DBAs can take it forward. So the prerequisites for using SnapClone is one, of course you need access to storage. Uh, number two is the existence of a test master. And test master is a sanitized version of your production database. So you could subset the data in a production environment or you could mask it uh, if, there is, if there are any sensitive values. Um, and once you have created this test master, you register the test master with Enterprise Manager and uh, functional copies can be uh, created uh, going forward using the self-service portal. So let's see the steps involved in setting up SnapClone. Now we are looking at the Enterprise Manager product. The first step to setting up SnapClone is to register the storage. To do this, you need to either have the cloud administration role uh, with the storage administration privilege or you could be a super administrator. So we go to setup, provisioning patching and storage registration. On this page we see uh, different storage uh, appliances registered. So currently we support NetApp and ZFS. So to register storage you can choose the relevant type uh, and click. In this case, let's look at uh, one of the storage systems. Now to register storage, you need to provide the name uh, registered in the in the DNS. Uh, of course, the vendor, the protocol to connect to, provide the credentials to the storage. Uh, all of the interaction uh, with the storage is done using this user. So specific privileges are needed for the storage user as well, and this is documented in our cloud administration guide. The next thing you provide is a bunch of agents that you want to use to manage the storage. So you can uh, define more than one agent uh, for sake of redundancy. Uh, and you provide the agent name uh, and the credentials required to run certain scripts or actions on the agent. At this time, uh, you, you can only use agents uh, that are on Linux 64 platform. Uh, so this is a prerequisite for uh, the communication or to enable communication with the storage. The last thing you specify is a frequency for synchronization. Based on the frequency defined, the, the product will reach out to the storage system and gather all the details, whether they are aggregates or shares or the volumes uh, and various of the storage artifacts. 
So we come back to the screen uh, and let's look at some of the other details uh, provided uh, on this page. So the moment you click on the storage, registered storage appliance, uh, you see uh, two tabs. One is contents, which is more of a storage centric view and it will show you a list of all the uh, aggregates and the flex volumes and you know the size and other details. Uh, now let's say your storage has you know, a lot of space, say 10 terabytes, but for cloning purposes you only want to allocate let's say half of it. So you can do that using the edit storage ceilings option. Using this option you can limit the amount of storage uh, that is allocated for snap clone purposes and this is set on a per aggregate basis. The other step that happens automatically is uh, the detection of databases. So since Enterprise Manager gathers uh, all the storage artifacts using the synchronize function uh, and it already has a list of all the databases that are currently being managed in your in your data center. So we put this two information together and find a list of all databases that have some portion of their files, database files, on this storage. Now this is done automatically and no additional steps uh, are required either by the storage admin or the DBA. Now we see a database called reference and if you click on show files, so it will show you the, the list of files and the volumes on which these files live. Now, for the sake of this demo, this database will be our test master. And now to nominate this database as a test master and use it for, for taking snap clones, uh, you're required to enable this database to be snap clone ready. This can be done using the flag uh, enable. In this case, this has already been enabled and you see the last column has a check mark. The other interesting bit is uh, we automatically do a bunch of validations to confirm that uh, all the volumes that are, that are used by this database are truly uh, flex clone enabled. So this is all about uh, the storage registration. Next, we configure zones. To do this, go to Enterprise, Cloud, Middleware and Database Home. Zones can be used to organize your cloud resources either by geography, that is East Coast or West Coast, uh, or by function, uh, which is product management, sales, finance, or could be by product lifecycle, which is development stage, production, etc. Click on the number against the PaaS infrastructure zones label. This will show you a list of all the zones that exist in the system. Let's look at an existing zone. Since zones are exposed to the self-service user, it is important to give it a meaningful name and description. You also define placement policy constraints at the zone level. Placement policy constraints are maximum ceilings uh, that are applied to any member or any host that is part of this zone. Currently, uh, we support maximum CPU utilization and maximum memory allocation. So databases will only be provisioned to this zone if the hosts or nodes that are that are members of this zone uh, do not violate uh, any of the constraints that have been defined. Next, uh, we actually select hosts that would be part of this zone. Provide credentials that will operate across all the members or all the hosts that are part of this zone. The visibility of this zone can be limited to a certain class of users. This is done using roles. For example, we have defined a developer role. Similarly, you could have sales, finance, etc. Finally, review the settings and click Submit. The remaining part of the setup is performed by uh, another user, which is uh, the database as a service administrator. Now we are logged in as dbas underscore admin. 
this user has the role EMSSA administrator assigned to it. For remaining setup, we will go to Setup Cloud Database. This page lists all the remaining steps that are required to enable SnapClone. First up, we create database pools. A database pool is a collection of servers or nodes that have the database software pre-installed. To create a new pool, click on the Create button and choose for Database. In this case, let's look at an existing database pool. Provide a meaningful name and description for the pool. Next up, we, we add a bunch of Oracle homes that will be used for database provisioning. Now, every member of a database pool is required to be homogeneous in nature. Homogeneity is controlled by the database configuration, which could be single instance or rack, uh, the platform, and the version of the database software. Homogeneity ensures provisioning consistency. We also provide credentials for both the Oracle Home and root credentials to perform certain privileged operations. Finally, an additional placement constraint can be set for the members of this pool. This is the number of database instances that are allowed. Click Submit to complete. Next, we configure the request settings. There are three request settings. Uh, first, future reservation, which is how far in advance a user can make a request. Uh, request archive retention, which is the duration for which requests are archived. And finally, the duration, which is how long can the user make a request. Next, we configure quotas. Now, quota is allocated to each and every self-service user, and it controls the amount of resources they have access to. Quotas are assigned to a role, and the users inherit the quota values from that role. So let's look at uh, one of the quota settings. This is for the role developer, and uh, we have allocated uh, 100 gigs of memory, uh, one terabyte of storage. We have allowed 20 database requests and 10 schema requests. Finally, we look at profiles and service templates. A service template is a standardized service definition or a database configuration that is offered to the self-service users. So a collection of service template forms your service catalog. A service template will provision a database with or without seed data. To capture an ideal configuration, the easiest thing to do would be to point at an existing database and, uh, and fetch uh, any interesting artifact about this database. Now this is done using a profile. So profile is essentially used to capture information about the source database that can be used for provisioning. To create a profile, click on the create button and select the source database. In this case, we'll choose the reference. Now in this case, we are not just interested in seed data, but an actual clone of the database. So the first step is to uh, capture a snapshot of all the volumes that form the database. To do this, we choose data content and select the option storage snapshots. This option is enabled only when the enable snap clone option is uh, enabled on the storage registration page. Disable the option to capture the Oracle Home. Next up, we provide the credentials for both uh, the Oracle Home and the uh, reference database. Click Next. Provide a meaningful name for the profile and also the location. This will be helpful uh, when creating a service template. 
click next. Review the summary. Note that all the storage details, which is the files and the volume that make up the database, is already available with Enterprise Manager. Clicking on Submit will connect to the storage and take snapshots of the volume. In this case, we will use an existing profile. For rest of the demo, we'll make use of the profile called Thin Provisioning Profile for Reference DB. Now let's create a service template. To create a new service template, click on the button Create and choose for Database. In this case, we'll look at an existing service template. Service templates are again part of the service catalog and are exposed to the self-service users. So provide a meaningful name and description. The first step towards creating a service template is to choose a profile. We will choose the profile, uh, thin provisioning profile for reference DB. This profile contains information of all the snapshots that make up this database. In rest of the wizard, we'll provide information of the database that we wish to create using this service template. Provide inputs like the type of database, which is single instance or rack. In case of rack, you can specify the number of nodes, identification details like SID prefix and domain name, and the listener port. Since a cloning operation only creates a read-only copy, we need to give it some write space. This can be done here. Click on the edit button and provide the, the mount point prefix and the writable, writable space that you wish to allocate. For functional copies of database, often QA engineers or testers need to make some changes to the database. This writable space can be used for such changes. The users of this database can be allowed to take further snapshots. This can be used as a mechanism to uh, roll back changes uh, that are not desired. You can limit the number of snapshots users of these databases can take. Next, we provide the credentials for uh, the administrative accounts, which are SysSystem and DBSNMP. For all the other non-administrative uh, schemas in the database, you can either choose to leave them as is or reset all of them with a common password. You can modify certain init parameters, for example memory, to create small, medium, large variants of this database. Custom scripts can be provided as part of the pre-creation or the post creation step. This can be very useful if you need to register say your databases with OID or certain actions that are specific to your organization. Finally you associate the service template with a zone and a pool. This ensures that the service template can actually work on the group of resources that you've identified and you can limit the visibility of this service template using roles. Finally, we review uh, the summary and click Submit. The last step is to configure chargeback. This will be configured in a different video. With this, we conclude the setup required to enable Snap Clone. Thank you for watching.